Hey everybody, welcome to Upstairs with the Right Music. I'm Mike McWilliams. I want to take the time to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Tonight's show, I'm probably going to tell you a lot more than you want to know about it, but our subject is going to be the three kings, that's right, the three Les Paul classics that I own. We're going to talk about those. Actually, we're going to do a little bit of a history first about Les Paul classics in general. Uh, probably again, like I said, a lot more than you probably want to know about the subject, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about. I think it's one of the finest Gibson guitars, uh, older Gibson guitars that are available out on the market. In any case, enjoy the show. Check it out. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I have a pretty sweet show to share with you today. I've got three Les Paul classics, a 1993, uh, a 1996, and a 2018, and I'd like to discuss them with you, a little bit of their characteristics, and uh, some of my impressions upon playing them. Uh, I know a lot of you guys out there are Les Paul classic fans. Uh, I know I am. Uh, when I studied these guitars, I really took the time to find a Les Paul model that had a really good reputation of having a great build and also an affordable price because as you know uh, they can get quite pricey. Uh, I'm going to start out with the creme de la creme. This is a 1993 Les Paul Premium Plus. Now this particular guitar uh, is special because of a couple of reasons. Gibson USA uh, were really starting to fire up and their quality control was was really excellent. Um, this particular Les Paul Classic, as you know, the Les Paul Classic series was actually at that time, uh, other than the historics, that was the top of the line guitar that they were putting out. Uh, they put out um, three uh, versions of this guitar, the Les Paul Classic, the Les Paul Classic Plus, and the Les Paul Classic Premium Plus. Uh, the Premium Plus came out in 1993. Uh, this particular model, uh, if you look here at the headstock, you'll see it, it says Les Paul model. It doesn't say Les Paul Classic. We'll discuss that when we get to this one. Uh, this one was made at a time, like I said, when the custom shop guys were also working the regular line. Uh, this particular guitar at the time was painted by Tom Murphy. Now you can find uh, descriptions of these stories uh, if you dig a deep online especially there's a gear page uh, article or a, a vlog that a guy who worked at, at that time at Gibson uh, talks about uh, these and uh, a lot of the other Gibson models that were made during this period and um, so you had the guys who were working on the custom shop guitars at the same time they were building and painting these guitars and um, uh, really top of the line uh, piece of uh, work here. Uh, I can't believe that this is a 1993. As you can see, this is completely clean. Uh, absolutely beautiful flame on it. Um, just absolutely wonderful guitar. Uh, it does have the slim neck. Now a lot of guys, they didn't like these guitars. Uh, because their main complaint was it has a very, uh, what they call a C-neck, I believe, on a very thin neck. And uh, I have to tell you that it does have a, a thin neck on it. Um, these necks were handcrafted. The guys would work the machine to, 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 to get it down to this. So I'm sure everyone is different. This one is actually one of the thinnest necks I've ever uh, felt on a Gibson. Uh, I love it uh, myself because I come from playing a Telecaster, so switching over to the Gibsons with a neck like this is just a piece of cake. Um, it's got, uh, these did not come with uh, the pickups that are in here. These are uh, 57 Classics again, uh, a, a pickup that I think is an excellent one. I'm going to keep these. I took them out of this one. But I, I'm going to keep these in here because it's a 57 Classic, 57 Classic Plus. Um, everything is original on this guitar uh, other than that. Uh, however, I am thinking about putting the RS 50s wiring kit in this to bump these pots up from the stock 300 pots to 500 pots. Um, I'm contemplating, I played this guitar quite a bit since I've had it and uh, it's got a growl to it. And I'm just afraid if I change the, the pots on this and caps, I'll lose that growth. Maybe not. It, it, 
in any case, uh, it, it's got a, quite a, a sound to it. Uh, so that's the story with this particular Les Paul Classic. Um, again, I would put this up against any Les Paul uh, uh, historic at that time. I'm, I'm sure, it's, especially when it, it's gotten the same tops as those. Um, it's just, it's, all, it's something all in itself. I'd like to call it an R60, uh, uh, an RO, sorry, but um, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty dang close. And this was just a sweet spot from January until I think about March. You know, you can see here too, it, has, it doesn't have the thick cutaway uh, binding here, it's got the thin one. Uh, so it, it, it's got all the classic uh, uh, things that you would find on an R8 or an R9 or an R, a current RO. Uh, just an excellent guitar. Okay, up next, uh, we've talked about this guitar before. This is my 1996 uh, Gibson Les Paul Classic. Uh, this is a bronze top. When I first bought it, I thought it was a gold top, but actually uh, upon a little research, uh, it's a bronze top. You'll see when I show you the, the, the Gibson Gold top uh, that I have there, the 2018. Uh, this guitar is uh, again completely original uh, stock uh, tuners. Uh, everything is original on it. I did put the RS uh, Guitar Works uh, 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 50s wiring kit in here. Uh, so uh, went from bumped it from uh, 300k to 500k on the pots. I gotta tell you this thing is a rock and roll monster now. Uh, one thing I'll tell you about the neck on this, uh, it's actually got a thicker neck than this two, the 1993 uh, Les Paul Premium Plus. Uh, I, I didn't know that, I, I always assumed that they would have a very similar neck, but they don't. This one actually has a thicker neck to it. Uh, it really surprised me. Um, uh, I like it. I, I actually, I like the neck, I like this thicker neck on here. Um, it's not as thick as, uh, say, the neck on uh, that Tokai Love Rocks that we took a look at uh, when we were at uh, TJ Gaki in uh, Japan. Uh, but it, it is a, a much noticeably uh, thicker neck than uh, the one on this uh, 1993. And I was actually very surprised about that. Um, what else? You guys know that I changed the pickups in this one. This also had 57 classics in there. That's the typical pairing that you'll find. These things actually came with ceramic uh, magnet uh, uh, pickups. Uh, the 592T and the 598T or 500T. Um, most people have found those to be too hot. It's like uh, having, uh, you know, uh, two super distortion uh, pickups in your guitar. People didn't like that too much, so they swapped them out with the 57s. The pickups that were being put in the first run of the custom shop guitars at that time, uh, again, another thing that makes this very close to a custom shop, if, if not actually the same, it's the same thing. In my opinion, flame me down in the comments below. Um, I, as you know, I made my own custom pickup with an uh, Alnico 4 magnet. Uh, this is a 1977 uh, DiMarzio PAF. Uh, it's got a great, with the combination of these two, this is a rock and roll demon. Um, I love this guitar. Uh, I really truly do. Uh, and um, uh, they're, two, they're two different guitars. They have two different tones to them, obviously because of the pickups, but just the feel of it when you're playing as well. Uh, because of the neck on this one, I'm sure. Uh, last but not least is the one that got me started, my first uh, Les Paul. Uh, this is a 2018 uh, Les Paul Classic. Um, it's, the neck on this one is as thick as the one on the 96, but it's actually a little bit wider. So again, three different classics, three different necks. Um, it's weird. Uh, in terms of when you're, when you're feeling the neck, when you're playing the neck, uh, uh, playing the guitar, you can notice a difference in the build of the neck on this guitar versus the necks on these two, especially this one. Uh, these are just in a whole different class. Uh, I, I, it just doesn't, 
it, it, it feels plasticky almost, but I mean, it feels good. I'm not saying that it's a bad guitar. I'm just telling that when you get into a good build like this guitar, uh, this one certainly was well made. Um, not to say this one wasn't. There were some issues, uh, as we've discussed, but uh, nothing major. Um, I have to tell you, you can't feel the difference between these classics. Uh, these obviously got P90s in it. Um, just a beautiful guitar. Um, sound wise, because they're P90s, it's not going to be the same kind of comparison. Um, just I can just tell you from a playing standpoint and, and just a feel standpoint that it's a good guitar, it's a great sounding guitar, uh, but it's not in the same class as this one. Certainly, uh, this one is not in the same as the class of this one. However, this one, I don't know, because of the, the neck on it, um, uh, I, I kind of, I like this one. I like this one a lot. But I've got my, R, my RO. As you know, if you, if you go out and you buy yourself an R9 or R8 or an R, uh, R0, you're looking at paying anywhere between $4,000, $6,000, $7,000. Uh, if you're lucky enough to find yourself uh, one of these early 93 Les Paul Premium Pluses, uh, the ones that doesn't say classic on the headstock, the one that says model on it, you've got yourself basically a same similar build guitar, not exactly the same because you don't have the Hollywood uh, uh, veneer on the headstock, uh, it's a short neck tenon in these guitars, all three of them, uh, but pretty much uh, when you put in the 500 dupe, some 500k uh, 50s wiring into it, you've got yourself the same guitar for about two or three thousand or more or less. Uh, so if you are lucky and you can't find one of these, believe me, I've been looking for a long time. Uh, I'm done uh, with my guitar uh, <laughs> look. Uh, this was the guitar I was looking for uh, to complete uh, this particular set that I want to have. Um, if you're looking for uh, an affordable, well built Gibson guitar. Try to find yourself one of these early 93s is what I'm trying to say. Well that's it for tonight's show. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just a little side note, don't forget to take the time to hit the subscribe button and also the like button if you like the content. YouTube is changing its algorithm that really doesn't help out guys like me who are just starting out and each and every one of you is really important to this organic process of creating this channel. I really do want to say thank you to all of my subscribers, all of you who have taken the time to hit the like button and to subscribe and I promise you that I'm going to change my uh, output. I'm going to try to shoot for two videos a week, so stay tuned for that. A lot of interesting content coming up. Until then, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Like the show? Like the show. Well, show your support by subscribing and hitting the like button. Like button. See you later. See you later. See you later.